Welcome, welcome, welcome back to my Let's Play of Pokemon Sapphire. I've decided that... Wait, no, not yet. I'm going to train up my good friend Ginkgo a bit, because my good friend Ginkgo is at a pretty low level. So, heading into Route 116 with an ominous feeling in my heart. Let us see what my Pokemon shall be. And... Eyes closed, eyes closed, eyes closed. I hear a Zigzagoon. That's annoying. Now, the thing about catching a third Zigzagoon is that it's not really worth it to use your Pokeball on a third Zigzagoon. Like, I'm not really all that tempted to actually attempt to capture this. Hmm. Especially, especially since I'm a little freaked out now because of Tail Whip, I think. It's unfortunate that I did not get a better Pokemon, but, well, no rest for that, I guess. Okay, next step is I'm using a potion on Ginkgo. Now, maybe that's, maybe that's a little bit of a questionable decision, but I'm doing this because I want to go battle trainers with him, and not solely with the um, Pokemon that I know can defeat those trainers, which, oh, also... Repel is sort of a sketchy one for me. I don't really like repels very much. I probably won't ever be using it because it seems to me to um, fall under the um, blanket label of running away from Pokemon to me. But, oh well. So this guy is a bug catcher. He has a Wurmple, which is threatening to say the least. I will use Headbutt and I will hope that it is stronger than I think it is. And it's not, so now I will panic. Um... Right, except for what I'll actually do is sort of um, defeat these Wurmples with Kink uh, and recognize that that potion was really sort of wasted. I don't understand the rationale behind that decision. I mean, I made it, but it wasn't a very good decision. Like, okay. I flinched this Ninkata, so I am going to get some good experience points for- ooh, double flinch, that's good. I am going to get some good experience points for uh, Ginkgo out of some of these battles, I think. Oh god, I haven't gotten any work done at all today. This is bad. Yeah, so Ginkgo's are level 10 now, so that's respectable and fair enough, and oh look, a Silcoon. I don't know if these specifically know only Harden, it's possible that the Silcoons that trainers have know moves that aren't Harden, but yeah, this one I think knows only Harden, so... There's not really a good reason to keep Ginkgo in for full experience points, although I will because Ginkgo needs as many experience points as she can get. So I'm just going to continue to do that and try to live with myself later. Right? Okay, it takes five tackles to beat down a Silcoon, and for the experience yield that they give, it's probably not strictly worth it, especially when tackles and headbutts are as precious as... Did I say five? I'm sorry, I meant six. Especially when tackles and headbutts are as precious as they are for Ginkgo. And so that was probably a less than ideal way for that situation to have played out, but at least I didn't get poisoned. Oh well, at least I didn't get poisoned, is my response. Bug Pokemon evolve quickly, so they get strong quickly too. Um, this guy here has a fighting type. I don't remember what it is, but I'm pretty sure he has a fighting type, which means it's time for Phantasm to shine, I hope. Oh, what's this? This could be bad. Whismur. Is Water gonna one-hit Kale? Not a chance. That right there ruins my plan of using Phantasm to beat the guy with the fight with the Machop or whatever it is, and means I have to switch now before he looks at me because there's a trainer with Geodudes further down, and Phantasm can deal with those with much less of a freakout. Okay, let's see what Pokemon you have, Mr. Youngster Joey. Oh dear, Youngster Joey. It's the first trainer in um, Pokemon Crystal. It's the guy with the uh, shorts or whatever. Okay. So, first Zigzagoon falls pretty easily to double kick. More experience points to feed Mikalei Juggernaut. Level 18 now. I feel sort of bad for training Mikalei almost exclusively, but 
that is what you have to do. In a Nuzlocke, you have to have a Pokemon that will not die. That way, if Mikalei does die, I can be completely screwed, right? Okay, so... That was not so freaking me out. Um, I can go back to Ginkgo now, I think, somewhat safely, and then... Mm, I have to save Phantasm's few remaining water guns, otherwise this could turn bad. Let's see, let me teach her how strong my adorable Pokemon is. I forget what Pokemon she has. Except for that it's a Meryl, apparently, and it's at level 10, so... Am I worried? Am I worried? No, it's a very good thing that I don't have Mikalei in here, because Mikalei can't do a whole lot to... Oh, am I worried now? Actually, yes, I'm really worried now. What do I do now? I pray for flinch. Aha! I may be worried and terrified, but I am also lucky as crap, because if I had not gotten to flinch there, I might have had to sacrifice a Pokemon. And that would have been really bad. Um, if that Meryl had critical hit in Ginkgo there, I would have lost him. That was seven points of damage. That was way more than I expected to take, and that was way more than I could have afforded to take. Afforded to take. So, that was a little bit too lucky for comfort. Uh, Ninkata, Ninkata, Ninkata. What can I do about Ninkata? I can defeat it with Headbutt. Maybe. Not with a single Headbutt, but with multiple Headbutts. Multiple Headbutt N. Okay, so... I guess that's alright. Uh, two good points of damage is not fatal. Alright, and... Level 11 is good. It is good that you are at level 11. And... Next up we have... Phantasm! For all of your water-type needs. If the tunnel doesn't go through, then I'll just go over the top! For all of your Geodude eliminating needs, we have a level 8 Geodude here for Phantasm, who has exactly enough power points to deal with this. Um, it is good that this worked out that coincidentally well. This is very good. 147 is a good yield of experience points. Hacker Clark sent out another Geodude. So Phantasm is officially beyond use. Um, that could prove to be bad later on if I ever find myself in need of a water type, and is probably a pretty strong incentive for getting a heal before I move on to the next section. But well, as far as me and following incentives that I know I should... Hmm, I've defeated Hyper Hecker Clark. Gasp, gasp, losing made me tired. It's no big deal if there's no tunnel to a hike out mountains or roads. Now here's Mr. Briny. He's the guy who lived in that college back, who lived in that um cottage back there on Petalburg Woods, and he has a Wingo named Pico, and I can sympathize with him being sad at his Wingo Wingo being stolen because God knows I would be. Um, there's an item here. It's an X special, otherwise known as useless. There may be an item on this rock. I forget. I feel like there's an item somewhere here. It won't be here because... Oh, I could just be wrong entirely. Yeah, I think I'm just wrong and there's no item anywhere near there. Um... Next stop, Rust Turf Tunnel! Except it's not really a tunnel because the tunnel's not finished, as I'm sure you've sort of gathered by now. Um, there's something up there. Uh, there's only one species of Pokémon that you can find in this tunnel. So, I know what I'm going to be going up against, and I know what I'm going to be attempting to capture. And, unfortunately, I'm a little bit freaked out for Ginkgo's sake, so I don't know if I'm actually going to attempt to capture one or not. Because, chances are, I won't really be using, yeah, level 6 Wismer. So, if Peck doesn't want to KO this, then I will try to capture it, but, yeah... So there aren't, so there isn't really an entirely strong variety of usable Pokemon in the early stages of Pokemon Sapphire. I've got the three that I've gotten these three up to up to fairly strong levels, and they are good and they can defeat things. And I'm going to use Ginkgo against this guy's Poochyana now, and I really hope that this doesn't turn out 
very badly. Headbutt is strong. I don't know if this Poochiana will be stronger. This is Ginkgo's challenge, and hopefully my being sort of out of it right now and not entirely sure what I'm doing is not going to turn out for the very bad. Um, Ginkgo used Headbutt. It's a two-hit KO. Poochiana flinched. Well, that was considerably simpler than I was afraid it was going to be. Ginkgo gained 129 experience points and defeated Team Aqua Grunt. Erg, my career in crime comes to a dead end. Obtain the Devon Goods. And I obtained a Wingull! Except for the Wingull is not mine. The Wingull belongs to this kindly old man here. I'm Marina. If there's anything that troubles you, don't hesitate to tell me. So they're going back to their cottage, um, just to the, what is it, east? To the west of Petalburg Woods. And I'm going back to Mikale, because Mikale is the only one of my Pokemon with offensive power points left. This guy is Headbutt, and two tackles remaining. And here we are encountering a Pokemon, which is a Wismer, which is a one-hit KO by Double Kick or by Peck. So I'm going to do that. And that works. I have to battle these trainers now. I'm not ready to battle these trainers. My Pokemon are not in very good shape for battling these trainers. <sighs> if Zigzagoon had one more... If uh, Ginkgo had one more um, headbutt power point, I'd be less frightened by the prospect of battling these trainers behind the cut tree. But as it stands, I'm just going to do it, and I hope I have enough super effective attacks to take them all down. One of them has a Ralts, which can do awful damage to Mikale if... I play this incorrectly, so I'm going to Ember the Shroomish for a one-hit KO, I hope. I hope that critical hit didn't matter, but it probably didn't. Um, and a Wismer. Wismer does not like Double Kick very much. Double Kick being super effective, I will go with Double Kick. And so this trainer proving considerably less scary than I made her out to be. I'm in shock. I lost. I'm going to go here and get that item and hope that it is a potion and not be sure whether or not I'm hoping that it's a potion because that wouldn't really change the outcome very much. I found an ether, good for restoring power points. So that trainer there, the school kid that you see to your right is the last trainer on the route, and he has a Ralts, which you have seen before, and his Ralts is at the level that it knows Confusion. I don't know if Confusion is strong enough to shave 14 hit points off of Ginkgo, but it's something of a scary concept. And I really, really hope that this turns out for the better. Because if that Ralts can defeat Ginkgo, then I'm in trouble, but... Hopefully both his Ralts is first, and it cannot defeat Ginkgo, so that I will be in decent shape for going into the next section of... Okay, there's only one Pokemon, it's a Ralts, it is at level 10. My Ginkgo is at level 11, and is going to use Headbutt, and we are going to see how much damage it does. And I got my Flinch off, that's good, and I use my Tackle, and... Ah, okay. The Spirits of Fortune have shined upon Ginkgo's Headbutt. No, really, Ginkgo's headbutt has gotten a scary amount of flinches lately. So, on a 30% flinch chance, but I swear, like, half if not more of those headbutts were flinches. More berries that I will never get, ever. Um, are there any other items around here? I forget. I feel like there should be. Um, so, yeah. I've been getting really lucky with Ginkgo's headbutt, and I'm happy that I'm getting very lucky, but I'm worried, because later on in this game... Zigzagoon's Evolve form turns up, knowing Headbutt, and being very fast, because Zigzagoon's Evolve form is a particularly fast species of Pokemon, and in case of that happening, I am a teensy bit 
frightened because those headbutts have a tendency to flinch Pokemon after Pokemon to death if you don't have any good resist to them and if you don't have a way to KO them in one hit. Mikalei may constitute a way to KO them in one hit, if I'm lucky. Shipyard and Slateport, that is one of my next destinations. I have to deliver the Devon goods to a slip shipyard in Slateport, and in addition, this is the greatest fetch quest in all of Pokemon, it is a two-step fetch quest. If you will hang on just a moment, you will see what I mean by that. This is the president of Devon Corporation. This is in that one building that I told you we would see more of later. This is the more of it later. Ask of an amazing person. Could you stop off in Duford Town? I was hoping that you'd deliver a letter to Steven and Slateport. On my first playthrough of Pokemon Sapphire, I got stuck here because... Pokenav. I've received a Pokenav, which is basically... It's like the equivalent of a Poke Gear or Poketch in some of the other Pokemon games, and it's got a map of the Hoenn region, and you can check the location. So, this is why I got stuck on this part in my first playthrough of the game. I checked the Hoenn map, and I was like, hmm, where's Duford? Is it this? No. Is it this? No. Is it this? No. Is it, well, here's Slateport. Is it anywhere close to me? Oh, I see. It's on an island. Well, I get Surf, um four badges from now, so what do I do? And I ended up sort of wandering around this area for a very long time in my first playthrough, just wandering throughout the whole Rustboro, Petalburg, Oldale, Little Root, like, area for sort of a long time, and okay. And until eventually I thought about the Wingo that I had saved, and I thought about Mr. Briny, the sailor who owed me a favor. If that gives you a hint as to what we are doing next. Uh, let's see, these guys say more interesting thing. That visually reproduces the dreams of Pokemon. Trying to develop a device that resurrects Pokemon from fossils, and it's working! So here we are, um, through that door that I said previously that I wasn't allowed to go through, but now Devon Corporation owes me, like, a billion favors for defeating a level 11 Pucciano, which apparently they are not capable of, despite being, like, a multinational corporation. But okay, so... That is sort of a, um... Side quest that... I have completed there, and something that is sort of relevant to the main storyline, only in the sense that it involves the only way to advance from here, which is going to Duford. And this is how we go to do. Okay, this guy here. Does he battle me in this version? I forget. I'm afraid to find out. Um, I don't think he does. It's Sapphire. I'm 90% sure he doesn't. Marina, how's your Pokedex? Have you filled in any pages yet? Mine rules. Okay, so that's my rival Brendan again. He doesn't battle you now, although in Emerald version he does, and he is like a Torkoal and the evolved form of his starter or something like that. So, that was pretty conveniently lucky that he didn't battle me right there. I'm happy about that. So, okay. Next stop, Duford Town, I think. Now, the way to get there is... Go back down through Petalburg Woods. You jump over some more ledges. You jump over another ledges. You jump over... Wait, I forgot to go back through the, uh, this way. Well, that was lame of me. I guess I'm going to go back up, then. You kick yourself for having jumped over so many ledges. You recognize that jumping over all those ledges was a pretty poor idea. You encounter wild Pokemon that you would not have encountered had you jumped over all of those ledges successfully as you initially intended. You one hit KO with double kick because Mikale is awesome. With, I guess, a single kick. Um, it's super effective. You gain a couple more experience points. You gain a little bit closer to growing to level 19. Which is good. You cut down the tree. Cut her down. Um, you recognize that you would love to be training Pokemon that aren't Mikale, except for... Um, they're all out of power points. Uh, here's a Cascoon. Which is an option to gain experience points for someone who is not Mikale, although I'm not really sure if it's going to be worth it to gain some experience points for Lily. Wait. Let's see who wants it more. 52, 28. Lily wants it more. Precept will eventually evolve. I'll just give him to Precept. So this could be sort of a long battle, because 
I sort of want to distribute the experience points as ethically as I can, except for... Um, I have no other Pokémon who can KO this because there aren't any power points left on my team. Cascoon is poisoned. It's using Harden. It's Shed Skin. will probably eventually cure it of the poison, which will be sort of fail. It's got an ability called Shed Skin, which just randomly cures it of status conditions like the poison that I've inflicted upon it. So Cascoon and Silcoon are the two um, evolutions that Wurmple, which is, yeah, the guy I've got right out now, right now can um, eventually become. And I still don't know what exactly the formula is for determining which one any individual Wurmple becomes at any given... Apparently it's based on the time of day or something like that, but there's a formula so complex as to make it essentially random whether or not you're Wurmple. So I got a critical hit, which means it hits through um, the opposing Pokemon's accumulated defense boosts. So that's why it did so much more damage than you would think after all of those hardens. She gave me Miracle Seed earlier, I remember this. Um, I was afraid to jump off of this ledge, and I will anyways, in the secret hidden part of Petalburg Woods. Um, this item is an X attack. Have I come all this way for an item that I can't use? Um, undoubtedly, okay. There may be something here if I'm lucky. Tiny Mushroom! Another item that I can't use! Well, well, well. Um, and down here there is another ledge which leads to a place that I have already been. So that was um, anticlimactic. Okay, so we have Route 104, which is the edge of the known universe. And this is the cottage of Mr. Briny, who you can now see is actually home this time and ready to fulfill his plot-related duties. Hold on, lass. Wait up, Pico. So, I tell him about my many-leveled fetch quest, and... Let us go to the next town! I'm going to let the music speak for itself, because it's awesome. That's been my favorite soundbite in the game since I first played it like 10 years ago, and unfortunately you only hear a ridiculously truncated version, and there is no way in game to actually hear the full version because it fades out while Mr. Briny's talking to you and you can't just like pause on his dialogue and have it continue going forever. There's actually no way to hear all of that, and I'm really sad because it's one of the best pieces of music in the game. So, I think that's enough for today. I'm going to, let's see, check my Pokemon party. Equalize out in front, good, because nobody else can survive. And I guess I will save it here then, and next time, delivering a letter! Until next time, this has been Let's Play Pokemon Sapphire. Thank you again for watching, and I will see you again soon.